Hi, everybody. Jeremy Miller back with you as your host for the Hire and Fire podcast brought to you by Pirate Consulting along with my co-host Amanda Anderson. We are going to dominate the topic of interviewing over the next couple of episodes. And we are utilizing basically our collective experience. Obviously, we have a lot of experience on this regarding the staffing agency. You have a lot of experience just in your personal career. Yep, I had that's a whole outside team. of staffing. So Correct. that's cool. Uh, you know, we were kind of laughing about this pre-show where there is an opinion on all this, right? So yeah. we're by no means trying to come up with gospel here. I think there are some things that are non-negotiables, but a lot of this is style and preference and knowing who you are. We're going to come at it from a few perspectives. So we're going to break down the manager's perspective first. So the hiring manager, what are they thinking? Going through the process with dealing with HR or going through multiple interviews, all that stuff. Then we're going to switch to the candidate side and break that down for what the candidate experiences or could experience or should be prepared for. And then wrap that sucker up with some important, literally important discussions about interviewing in COVID because my God, have we experienced some shenanigans? I mean, people not even having a shirt on yet <laughs> on video, you know, people having dirty clothes and shenanigans behind them. Like even yeah. stupid things like don't interview with the camera on your laptop being on the table, like prop it up. So it's eye height. Otherwise you look weird, you know, yeah. looking down on the camera, just stupid stuff. Right. Yeah. So that's changed a lot, right? Interviewing is almost all remote on all phases. So that's it. Still, still. Still, yeah. still very much so. I mean, we, if you guys are curious, I would say a minimum of 80% of what we're doing right now is full remote. For any client, whether they're based here in the Twin Cities where we are, of Minneapolis and St. Paul or not. Uh, so the whole landscape has changed for interviewing, um, which obviously is impacted because of everybody being remote and this COVID shenanigans. So we're definitely doing the manager's perspective today. We'll see how far we get. We think it's a two episoder. Yeah. We'll see what happens. So, okay. Tell, tell the group, share with the class. Oh no. A little bit of a, a like just in general, just give highlights of kind of what your experience has been from a manager interviewing. Like, sure. what's it like for you? What'd you learn when you first started? Sure. So, anything. so, so I uh, managed a team of digital marketing specialists. I had grown the team from, I don't know, it was like 8 to 10 to over 20. It was 24, 25, 26. In almost exclusively younger pros, right? Yes. 22 so, to like 28-ish. A lot of millennials yeah. uh, and next gen. I'm technically one of those and I'm freaking 40. You're on the cusp. You're I am definitely cusper. on the border. You're yeah. a you're an Amazon or not Amazon. You're an Oregon Oregon Trail wow. generation. Sweet. That's what they call you. No doubt. Yeah. Like I remember in F in middle school that they're talking about the information superhighway. And I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> While I go use the card catalog in the library. Oh my God, right? I remember that. Dial up internet, all that shit. So So I had a lot of managers. a lot of young kids. Yeah, yes. Like young out freshers, no experience. Yeah. So now as a manager, we're talking about you're interviewing for like, um, let me think the entry right word. Le- a lot of entry level. So, so for what they could become. Correct. Right? Anything, I had anything? to find the pot- people with potential. Yeah. And what's their capacity? Correct. The like, I'm. How I'm, much work I, are they going to take for I'm me living to at mom's. I'm living at mom's still. Half like, of them did. Yeah. Relationship drama with yep. that age. You know, no one's, no group of people age wise are immune from challenges challenges but for sure so 28 of those suckers did you have some leads or managers under you uh i did i had an assistant manager uh and um i had a couple leads as well okay so, so i had some support yeah not a ton but yeah. i had a few people um but most of it you know of the decision was always mine um but I really relied on the team because I was a manager who, yes, I grew up, grew through the department and knew my stuff. But towards the end of my tenure there, I was working through people. So I was becoming less and less technical the longer I was in that position. Makes sense. I mean, you were in a true director role, Correct. quote unquote, where you're managing the managers. Correct. So that's cool. Obviously needed if you got 28 people. So we did. So I, I definitely utilized my support staff to 
weed through resumes for me because I never had time. All right, so spit it real quick overview. What's the process? You guys were a smaller organization. Small you, organization. You didn't have a giant HR team fishing your resumes. Yep. So we would post it. We'd get a bunch of resumes. You didn't use vendors like us very often, but you no. would on occasion. Yep. Okay. Um, for me, I never got to. We only used Indeed. Like yeah. that was it. Okay. That was the only. Or our website. I, loved, I love to hate it. I really do. Our website, and then through LinkedIn, we'd share that. And, and so that's what we had. Um, we'd get resumes. I'd send them over to some of my top performers and said, basically my leads, and said, weed through these. So you're basically doing a lot of what my old a role was, where we were hiring the same demographics. So it's it's question-based interviewing having to do with, like, tell me a time where you were blank. You know, like you're almost trying to figure out a, at least, okay, I'm wording this wrong. We were always very intentional. We were trying to figure out areas that these candidates have gone through some shit, figured it out and plowed through, right? Essentially like, like the grit. Do, do you have grit? Do you have stick to itiveness? Yeah. Like, I don't care what it is. You got cut from the cheerleading. To, what is it? It doesn't matter. Right. Uh, you know, so well, it, I was looking was for transferable skills, yep. uh, things that you could learn in life. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be with an employer. Yeah. Um, and could they just, could they convey that and, and maybe some basic information, you know, who knew basic information about what we were doing, but I would have them weed out. I just didn't have the time. No one had yeah. time. There was always a lack of time. That was our hardest resource, basically, our, our most scarce resource. So they would weed through them. I'd have someone call and schedule them. And I was that, ter- honestly, terrible manager that would be walking into the interview Looking, looking at it for the at first time. It for the first time. But that would be, would, Out that, of would that be second interview or you just come in at the end of the first interview? Um, it, we, it would, it varied. Okay. I would say it varied based on my schedule and necessity. Yeah. So I didn't want to have to only see the end candidates because I, I knew I was more tenured in interviewing and I, I have, I'm pretty good at it of, of kind of seeing through what they're saying and being able to pick out little things like being an, em- like an empath of like be just reading people Mm -hmm. and so that's my skill but there's problems with that like um because obviously if i have any bias towards anyone like whether i'm aware of it or not that could affect my yeah my my interviewing and i knew that you know i tried to combat that best i could but but in fairness at that skill set level you really are going on gut feel interpersonal ability this like raw potential and, and we were a small company, so culture mattered. Totally. Culture mattered. I was I built a very cohesive team. When things were going really well during during that that period, I was doing most of the hiring, most of the vetting. I would be picking the people, and the team was very cohesive and supportive of each other. It was when I got pulled away from that process and was handing off so much that I kind of it started to decline a little bit mm-hmm. um, where I'd get people that I probably felt a little concern over when we were hiring. Yeah. So, okay. But so, we were, we were literally, we, we needed people, you know, sometimes. So you did what you had to do. Yeah, totally. So at the very end, did you turn into the stamp of approval at the end of the process? I, I did. Yeah. I did. Where I would I would be doing the final interview. I would write the, the offer letter and do the negotiations. How often did you end up being a the person that rejected the candidate? So your leads and managers are, are handling understandable duties of anything from resumes to initial screens. How often did they bring you somebody they're jacked about and you just walked out of there like, uh-uh. Often. Really? Okay. Yeah, there so were plenty of t- there were plenty of times where I'm like, I see what you see. Yeah. On paper, like they were they were very resume focused. Were they also wishful thinking? 
Um, Always seeing the bright side of every candidate? No, I good. honestly, I would say that that would be more me. No shit. I honestly would be like, I see potential. You bleeding heart. I am a bleeding heart sometimes. No doubt. Sometimes. Yeah, sure. Uh, hard ass. Uh, the yeah, other just 50% raging of- <laughs> bitch the other time. <laughs> totally, totally. Just ask them. I was, hey, either, Amanda, I was either wonderful or yeah, awful. Amanda's going to come in to meet you, and uh, she's the last step of the interview process, so buckle up. Yeah, yeah you got to impress her. Um so there were times where I'm like, I'm sorry, but I'm just, I'm not. And then in the opposite where I would see potential and they did not. Yeah, yeah. And I would, I would veto their decision going at the end of the day, it is my decision. Yeah. I want your, I want your feedback, but I'm making the hiring so decision. So when do you hire that person? How long into their tenure do you tell them directly that your lead didn't want them and they should know that <laughs> and they were wrong? <laughs> Uh, yeah, there were times where Mm. after a hire that nobody supported except for me and they would work out most of the time, not always, you know, you're never, you're never perfect. Mine was 12 years of recruiting. So it was a hundred percent doing the recruiting job. So part of the intake process for lack of a better word was I met with everybody, which is the way most recruiting firms should operate a little adjustment of course with COVID, but I too prided myself on reading people when I thought the interpersonal connection, the vibe with somebody, their eye contact, how they're dressed, their body language, how they answer questions, how they're really excited or not excited. Those were the things that I was cluing in on in order to know how to help them find the right job. That kind of prepped me for just basic question, answer, understanding, investigative, digging a little bit, you know, stupid shit like you know, hey, help me understand what you're making now. Okay, well, I'm, I'm at 80. I'm at 80K. Okay, so roughly a little less than 40 bucks an hour. What are you looking for now? 112. Okay, so help me understand why. Well, all right. Uh, okay. What did you do to be able to leave? Right, or, yeah. or like, okay, so just to make sure you're at 80 now, you want 112. Does that mean if I have a job that's 93, I should not bother sending it to you? And more often than not, they'd be like, no, I'd like to see it. And I'm right. like, okay. So I, like so that's your pie in the sky goal, yeah, yeah. but you're open to the middle. Yeah, digging. But that's not a supervisory, I'm evaluating your potential for my team. I had some techniques that people didn't understand from the outside looking in. So like there were plenty of times where the candidate would show up. And you're whipping out tarot cards. And I wouldn't rush to go greet them. Oh, I'd leave him sit in the lobby. Now you psychological torturer. Well, it was twofold. One, well, if, I wanted them to some... see. I wanted them to oh. see the team, uh, just operating without prompt, feel without anything. Feel how good yeah. it is, because when it was good, it was real, real good. And they, I had more people in interviews say, "Boy, everyone walks around with a smile. They're all talking." And I was like, yep. "Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, heavy drugs." So like, I had one manager who really did not understand how to interview or how to manage, <laughs> to be honest. And I, back when I was a smoker, I would, I actually, someone had shown up and was sitting in the lobby and I went out to go have a smoke. One, I shouldn't have done it because you smell, but her complaint was the person's here, like, go, go. And I was like, no, they're 10 minutes early. Yes. I'm perfectly fine. Oh, damn it. I love this discussion. And I am going to leave them sit there because I want to see how they handle themselves. And mine wasn't Do they talk to anybody? Yeah. Do they sit there, you know, bashful? Are they playing on their phone? Like, what are they doing? And then when I approach them, how do they conduct themselves? So I'm always analyzing Mm. all of this stuff. And nobody knew that, you know, nobody had any experience with interviewing of, of any of my techniques. So it was... But I got so good at reading people, I started getting pulled into the technical interviews. Mm-hmm. And I was not there to determine if they were technically sound. I was there to read them. Yeah, you were a bullshit meter mm-hmm. a little bit. Interesting. Yeah, I got I got better, obviously, with interviewing once I started interviewing for teams that I was personally building. I started with panels with a bunch of yep. other folks that I helped manage panels. the location with. A lot of what we did was internal promotional based interviewing. So people we already Mm. know that we already work with, right? And they're trying to get to the next level and they have to get through the gauntlet of, you know, me and three or four other people on the other side of the desk that have a lot of clout. 
we'd fuck with them sometimes too. I mean, one of my favorites was we would set it up so that we knew where they would sit and we'd go lower their chair all the way to the ground. Oh my God. I'm so glad you said that. Just to see if they would, if they would fix it. Now this, I think the important distinction here is these are people we know, right? So these are not first timers walking in. So it's a little bit more fun. And sometimes we use it to actually loosen the mood. Correct. Because they're tense. Correct. Other times it's just literally interesting to see what they'll do. Yes. So we had a similar issue where the chairs just would slowly lower and we would... Sometimes we'd prep them on it. Sometimes we wouldn't because I wanted to see how they handled themselves. Again, I'm always kind of seeing like when something doesn't go right, how do they handle themselves? And so they're sitting in the chair and you would watch them start to go down. And you're like, okay, is he going to say something? Is he just going to fix it? Or he or she, is it going to affect their train of thought? Because we, we were client facing. So like there were times where you'd have some distraction behind you can you maintain what you're doing or do you, are you the type that's going to make a joke, which is also fine, or do you crumble? Which So I need to, to know with some of that stuff, how do you handle yourself in that situation? And so it was just funny because yeah, there would totally. be there'd be people or or were they kind of too highfalutin where they would be like, well, what kind of place you got here with chairs oh. that are, well, they're chair. Like, well, yeah, we kind of joke about it and whatever we're we're a small company mm-hmm. like so it was just and you guys had a nice office so we had was, a great yeah, office of it, was, it, was it was very was, beautiful it was cool. um a huge upgrade from the first one and so it was um it was just interesting to watch how people would yeah, react yeah the one thing that i found really interesting being on the panel of interviews was watching my other colleagues and what their demeanor was one of them uh was a really cool chill guy And he was very good at his job, very GQ style guy, but he was a hard ass. I had never, I I have never seen that side of him outside of an interview. Intimidating. Yeah. Doesn't break a smile. Um, You know, so you you got a little bit of the good cop, bad cop going on there. I hate that. My shtick was a little bit more of, especially in a panel, it was when I hear something that piques my attention, a lot of times you don't get to bring it up until the conversation twisted a little bit. And I, mine was kind of bringing them back to that. Like, Hey, I don't, you know, this part isn't sitting well with me like, yeah. or, or I'm, I heard your story and I, I can't quite tell if you're being genuine with me right now or not. Well, Cause some interviewers will just breeze past stuff and you, and there be, especially when I had, so I had, my right hand man basically was was in a lot of the interviews, and there were toward especially towards the end where when I was there, he would just make it awkward like all the time, and and, and then would breeze past weird weird responses when and I'd be like, whoa, 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 let's go back to that. Yeah, like, hey, Michael Scott, can, can you we fix give this? me an example? Yeah, 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 because yeah. a lot of this, uh, what we do is if, if you could. You can memorize a handful of acronyms like you could fake it uh, that you know what you're talking about. So I would find questions like what metrics within Google Analytics uh, would you consider engagement metrics being like how you measure how well a person is engaging with your website. And you can't fake that one. You cannot fake that one because that is not Google. That that is not a fill in the blank type question on a test. You know what? You're mean. Let's be honest. (laughs) I, I, uh, I need, but it was a pe- good people, people like me need some open ended. Let me, let me wing and use my words to w- weasel my way out of this. But I know there, it, obviously it, you needed to know that. I needed to know that because it would, it would very clearly tell me a few things. One, if they don't know anything, know something, are they going to own up to it? Are they going to be like, honestly, I couldn't tell you where you're going with that one. Here's how I use Google mm-hmm. Analytics. Okay. I can work with that. But if they're like, well, you know, if you just look at the page and like how fast it loads, whoa, you're in left field. Yeah. You have no idea what I'm talking about. Nope. Eh. So there were there were a few questions that I had like that that yeah. were good qualifiers. So you guys were entry level ish people. But Depend. You, you were, we had you, multiple okay, levels within the department. But in general, you were expecting a minimum of like education or intern. You needed something. This you was read not true a book. Like field. you read. You took a marketing class. Um, and not so much for the. I mean, for the entry level, 
it was not so much of the knowledge that they had. I actually preferred less for the entry level. Yeah, you didn't have to help them on learning. Anything. Correct. I was more looking for, did they take initiative to create a website or help a friend and do X, Y, Z? Do you have passion about this in any do way? Do you have? Because, I fucking love because this. Because here's the deal. That's Even, why I left in the marketing, field. In marketing, either you geek out on this shit or you need to find a new job. Because this, uh, I remember when I first started and I was like, look at this number. Yeah. And like, oh my God, and this and that. And I, I like, you geek out on this. Yeah. If I don't feel any of that with, with a person, like you find this cool as fuck, mm-hmm. then you're, you're not going to love it because you have to love it to work here. <laughs> yeah. So, so here at Pyra, it's actually the opposite. We're only hiring experienced people. So I jokingly say, you already know what we're talking about here. You know what type of role you've been in this type of role before, Mm -hmm. right? So if you're even talking to me, then you know this is an area that you're either wanting to go down or very seriously. And that's pretty easy to have that discussion, which is cool. All right, so we could obviously do this all day. Let's try try and get it in an order. Okay. So I tried to kind of put things into a little bit of an order. Again, manager's perspective. That's what we're trying to come at here, right? So how how does a manager view HR, right? How HR does stuff prior to them even seeing candidates. Interviewing with the team from the manager's perspective. Interviewing with a, quote, technical expert, like technical screens, code assessments from the manager's perspective. Interviewing directly with the hiring managers, so like the, the one associated with them, and then some superiors beyond it, right? Like if you look mm-hmm. at the basic steps of an interview process, We hope that it's not five damn steps spread over six weeks. We're not going to go into that per se. We're not talking about that today. Yeah, That is relevant to what we're talking about. So we'll get into a little bit of that. But let's dive into the HR part. So you you would readily admit you just haven't been in a hiring capacity where massive HR department was at your disposal. Never. I've worked for more smaller, for smaller companies or um, smaller companies or like franchise type setup. So even like I worked for State Farm, but I never worked for corporate. I worked for the agents. Which could be a one person show in a corner Correct. store or a or 500 huge. agent super, super, super agent, big company. Yeah. yeah. So, so this one's huge because of what we do in the staffing business. So HR, for the most part, we want to view as an ally from a staffing firm perspective because of the fact that we understand they are a part of this process. And for some companies, there is a very detailed, organized online tool, scheduling, organized way for how this is done, right? So managers have to deal with that, right? So what if you have a depart, what if you have an HR department that is overly scrutinizing resumes? Or if they have nothing. Or you, you, or they don't filter a fucking thing, and you're getting 83 randos oh forwarded to you. I would be so irritated. That's so, a lot. So, like, did you have any thoughts on that in general? Of like, if you're a manager and you're dealing with an HR team, quote unquote, above you, just that supports the process. Like, how would so you want to navigate that? Twofold. I think I would, if if they're screening them decently, I would be very appreciative of the help. Um, just because you're typically, and we see this with managers where you're overtaxed, you're stretched, thin, you don't have time to really dive through it, through these, these Mm -hmm. resumes. So I think if they were good at it, it would be a welcomed help on the flip side. I don't like to relinquish control. So, Mm. uh, I read resumes very differently than other people do. Mm -hmm. So I am certain that they're probably going to weed out a candidate that I would want to talk to. Yeah. Here's the bitch of it. Um, if you're a manager out there and you have an HR team that you rely on, you already know what the, what, what the shtick is, right? You know, if they're viewed as friendly or foe, if you view them as a partnership and it's actually treated that way, whether it be from them to you or you to them, Mm -hmm. right? Like they might be sweet to you, but you might just cock block them all day trying to give them information or 
you could view them as very capable. And this is a little bit of a organizational structure. Like is sure. the company investing in talent acquisition? Or are they and, find a, trying to find the cheap route? Yeah. Kind well, of like, thing? you know, do they use a lot of firms like ours and that's part of their hiring strategy or if they are, are they spending the money on HR in general and have a talent acquisition team that is supposed to be leaned on? Well, I'd be frustrated if it's a technical position and you're dealing with HR of like, do they really truly know no. what they're doing no, no. they're probably keyword it, it, searching and, and at best. every job description is garbage most they companies, are most this is not we're not picking on anybody it's almost everybody correct so we know as a staffing organization that hr job descriptions are to be appreciated but we're, we have to dig through them and figure out what's real what's not Copy pasted from six years ago, brought over from another department, hasn't been updated, etc. Writing jobs descriptions are, is tough. Yeah, no doubt. I hated no it. Doubt. I no had doubt. to do many. Hey, brilliant. How about this? I, I wrote all I, of ours. I watched my girlfriend last night have to go through an exercise of explaining everything she does in her role and ranking the percentage of time she spends on it. She's hating that, obviously. Yeah. I'm smiling going, they just had their own employees write their own job descriptions. Freaking brilliant. That's hilarious. So anyway, the, the HR thing is, is, you know, are they on your side as a manager or do you feel like you're dancing around them? Anything from they're not good to they're not available to there's no synergy to you view it as a waste of time. Mm-hmm. Or are, is it the other way around? You have to follow through them and that's part of the deal, right? So... A- HR Have you is, had to coach anyone uh, with dealing with HR in your career? I would assume so. Oh, yeah. I mean, th- that's all we do here internally, right, is we have to understand when we need to be able to utilize HR and be on the same page because a lot of organizations have a conduit that is legit. A lot of times we don't, right? So uh, that's why we're being engaged. There's a lot of times where as a staffing organization, we – we're utilizing HR, but all they really want is to be updated on the process. So sure. we just, all we have to do is play friendly in the sandbox, right? Okay. Then there's other times where here's some weird ones. I'm familiar with people that have had these talent acquisition jobs. A good chunk of times they have bonuses tied to how often their organization uses a firm. So like when the company uses a firm, it actually hurts the income potential of talent acquisition. So how do you think talent acquisition views staffing firms if they're taking money out of their pocket, right? right? A lot of it's the culture where they they just have an HR team that's respected. So that's cool. Hmm. Um, We could dive on that forever and ever, but let's continue. So it's a little bit of an overview of HR from the manager's perspective. So Interview with the team, whether you meet them first as a manager or you have them meet the team first, it doesn't matter. We're just going to look at that as though they met them first. From a manager's point of view, you have a candidate meeting your team. Yep. What we you, did this what, all the time. What are you thinking? Are you more worried about how your leads and managers are interviewing or like, do you, how, how, how do you like to play that? Yeah. So when I first started there, um, there, b- before I was in management, there was one gentleman there who was probably the weakest link on the team. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. And he was the worst in these panel interviews. Just beating them over the head with like what they know. Do you actually know this? And he was guess, competitive. He he it's like the only place he could ex- es- exercise dominance. Power. <laughs> and it, to the point where we had to pull him from these. Yes. We had to pull yes. him. We had that situation here just a couple of weeks ago yeah. where we had to explain to a director very detailed feedback from the candidates on what the team interview was. Even simple things like they wouldn't turn their cameras on it, 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 on the interview and it was very choppy and things of that nature. So. A lot of times managers, directors, VPs kind of take for granted that their peeps know what they're doing, oh, right? Yeah. So like, yeah, yeah, w- yeah. what if they knew what they were doing a year ago, but they've kind of lost their way? Well, and they, you have to make sure you convey what kind of a person you're trying to find. Because like I had one of my best, she was my protege. She is amazing. Hi, Kelsey, if you're Hello. watching this. Hi, Kelsey. I love her. Um, she Hey, legit, by the way, you made it 28 minutes. Continue. She was, <laughs> she, she was really hard on candidates because um, she wanted them to be like her and I were. And I was like, 
you can't only look for us. Like yeah. you only, we will never hire again. Like it's hard to find. Not to but, pat myself on the back, but, but were, I'm. We were very specific kinds of people that you know her and I, and I was like, this is entry level. But you would rather her be on the end of the spectrum, caring about who comes in more oh, so than whatever. Oh, 100 percent. But be realistic about what we're Correct. looking for. Correct. Now, had we been hiring a higher level position, I would have agreed with her. But for the actual position we were looking for, I'm like, I'm looking for X, Y, and Z. Mm. You are not here to check their knowledge. You are not. That's my job. You're here to see, are they going to be a fit? Can they speak? Can you know? Are do they have some charisma? Do you think that they're coachable? Those kind of things. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm looking for from you. Those your questions should be tailored to this objective. I'm responsible for deciding whether or not they're going to be technically where we want them. So I I learned that the hard way because I, they would come out of interviews and be like they don't know anything and I was like of course they don't they just graduated mm-hmm. like yeah so guys so I, I'm actually right now a little opposite of that where I have my lead go in and meet everybody and I don't prep them in any regard and I would go in there and and I he he kind of understands that I just want him to go in there and just get a read and be honest, right? Like, but he knows that you've had that conversation. C- correct. These yeah. guys didn't know. They right. so, they so, thought they were weeding out a candidate, right. and I was like, no. So from a manager's perspective, you had to learn how to coach the yeah. leads to to screen properly for what yeah. they were supposed to screen. Did, did you for. guys have a process of like I expect a written update on each candidate no. via email? You guys would just download in we, person. We would just I'd go in right after Got it. immediately after and go. What do you think? Dump it. Let's go. Yep. Yeah. What did you like? What did you not like? Um, and then sometimes it was conflicting opinions. And I again, I'm just taking information in. Knowing my people and like, okay, I know he's going to do this. And and so you take everything with a grain of salt or like, okay, she's going to love everyone. So I just want to know a specific thing from that person. Or, you know, you kind of learn your team, which I did. I learned those two very well. Um, So I always kind of knew how to take their feedback. And you would always do team quote unquote interview first, meaning that they would either not meet. necessarily. Okay. It was, so you would not. I would do okay. it either way, depending on, it would just be what worked out. Sometimes it was the same day. Yeah. So we literally would have them there and be like, okay, I'm going to go get the team. We wouldn't make them come back. Yeah. We were, we like to move fast. What, what I love about this is I've had, this is really cool, but I've had employees multiple times almost come talk to me like, can can you make sure you bring in the right person? Like we have a, we have a really cool culture here, and we want to keep it going. And I'm like, yeah, I inter- we're trying. I, I brought yeah. you guys in, crazy fools. Like, yeah, I think I'm doing okay. If if we're do, you know, but I'm, obviously you have one. You know, you will never have a perfect record yes. when hiring. You will yes. never. No one does. Mine, uh, um, I guess if I was being on, well, it's a little bit more to the hiring manager's point of view. So let's keep it on the team component. I just love the insight of things that you don't see or the conversation that they had when you weren't in the room that was different than what you experienced Mm. or when you both get the same read on somebody and it's very validating. Oh, there were times I would walk in the room, we'd all nod to each other and I'd walk out because we just knew. We're like, yeah, yeah. Right, right. And then sometimes I'd offer it on the spot. Like we we moved very fast. Um, we didn't have time to dick around. <laughs> yeah, I just think the crucial thing from a manager's point of view on interviewing with the team is exactly what you mentioned, right? Like you have to understand what biases they're bringing into it. If you have somebody who's interviewing who's more likely to be a little threatened by an up and comer, right. then you have to factor that in. You know, if you have somebody who tends to like everybody, you got to factor. You know what I mean? So you, you need to beat you, on you your team. You have to coach them. And I would argue. Um, especially if it's over the phone in any way, I would be shadowing one out of every whatever, right? Just to sit in and understand how they do it. And ideally don't even tell people that you dialed in. Well, there's times, yeah, there's times where I would listen to my team and, I, and you know, like Brian, for instance, and I would say like, I know what you're trying to to ask but it's very confusing like I don't know how to answer your question if I can't answer your question as the director do you think you should be 
using yeah. now now granted sometimes technically uh, yes that, like if it was paid search or something like i wouldn't have the answer because that's not i i'd never worked in that um but i was like i i should be able to answer 95 percent of your questions and like that one was like routinely he you're making it confusing because it's so long like he he and he would prep them with the answer at the beginning and i was like you're leading the witness mm -hmm. like of course they're getting all the answers or like we had i had to train my team on how to interview are you talking from a technical perspective or in just in general, general. Okay, like sometimes technically i would i would have to do a little bit but i felt they were okay that mm -hmm. way they struggled on the rest of it mm -hmm. of honestly seeing someone's potential and how to pull out questions that weren't just about marketing i'm like have you ask them things about like college or the, you know how do you figure out their grit or if they're a giver versus a taker because you can't have all takers on your team um you got to be careful of hiring a taker mm -hmm. okay cool so let's transition a little bit to the quote unquote technical expert in yes. it in it this has become more and more common I immediately think of one individual that was a technical screening guru and he was in the SQL space and I loved his style and we knew what he was going to do every single time he would get on that call being the technical screener. He would ask the candidate to tell him what, he, what they think they are best at regarding this area. Okay. And then he will take that and dissect the shit out of it. <laughs> so if you say you're really good at it, you better be you able better to back be it good up. At it. And, it, it, and he didn't care if you stumbled, you just needed to be able to say up front, I, this is something that I'm a little weak at and let me explain why. That was totally 100%. cool. But, but the thing that would instantly get you rejected was saying you're really good at something and within two questions, he debunked you. Uh, I agree with that completely. So the technical screens are weird though. So the technical screen from like an online assessment and code assignment in IT gets a little goofy. We got some fucked up processes out there. Yeah. I mean four, six, eight hour code assessments where candidates are actually saying to us like, A, yuck. Yeah. B, are they having me write code for them and they're just stealing everyone's code from assessments? Like what's happening here? Right. And almost always it was, it was meant to be as good as it could. So they would, whatever the attest was, is they would give it to the team that's existing, find a median or a mean or a whatever, and figure out like, okay, that's where it should be. It should yeah. take somebody an average of blank in an av and they should get an average of blank score. Sure. And that made sense to them. But a lot of times it was broken. They didn't understand that the people that were taking the tests were already in the environment. So these people are having to take this out of, out of context per se and yeah. just take hours and hours and hours. Cause you had to get caught up from a development standpoint. But I get it because I get they're it. sick and tired of interviewing people two or three times and bringing them in and they can't do the job. So they want to avoid Correct. they want to avoid wasting two months of onboarding. Well, and that was a point I made in my, for those of you who don't know, a, a vlog that I did recently where some people will interview. What's that? You did a vlog on pirateconsulting.com? Did that also <laughs> get added to things like Instagram? Whatever. Go ahead. <laughs> It it's a did. sweet, it's a sweet vlog though. Keep going. It, it, I talk about the fact that some people will interview well, but perform poorly mm. and some will interview. T they just, they, they freeze. They, mm -hmm. they're not good at it. The but same technically, people that suck the tests in eighth grade. Yeah. But they're really smart. So if I'm that person, if where I, I know I am not good in the interview, I am excited that I get a chance to prove my my abilities yes. as well yes and then be able to go into that interview going uh, i don't have a lot of interpersonal skills like i'm a nerd like yeah. i want to do this this is what i'm good at and that's part that that is the main function of what we do right? correct so we understand these in, these people as individuals and know that there are certain people that would be better with a big group Doing a lot of heads down work. Code. And then that same person might be amazing at that skill, but they would not fit in a whatever other type of environment, right? Well, sometimes you have client facing stuff and Good that's point. just not 
right for all, like we had a rule at work of like ne- devs don't talk to clients yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Yeah. ever and when it, they like do office space i'm good with people <laughs> yes and then when I'm they a do person. we would be on the call with them yeah. like navigating and be like okay so and so did you understand everything because we never understood any of it yeah so the technical person obviously i'm hopeful that most managers have chosen the right person to do that Um, I think the only thing you have to think about on the technical component is, are you losing people because of the severity of anything from time investment to like, hey man, it's a candidate market and I got four other jobs and I like your job, but you're really running me through the ringer on this interview process. And you can actually lose people for that. We've had scenarios where their testing works really good, but one out of 400 people get through it. Well, that's cool that that one worked, but yuck yeah, to get yeah, there. Yeah. You know, so is there anything about your technical screening process, either a person or uh, some type of a code, whatever, no, that's broken? I think that's what I would be asking myself. We don't have this on the list, but I think it's good to bring up of what if – you know, because we deal with this with IT, what if you are a non-technical manager managing a team of developers? And I think that this is the example where you should be using that Then you pull in that person, right? Because because we had that where I was, where the manager did not know a lick of code, uh, the actual director of the departments. Um, But she had a lead that she relied on yeah. of like, okay, you're coming in for, for the technical side of it. And you got to tell me if he knows his stuff or not, yeah. you know? Yeah. So that's, but that I, w- I would struggle with that a lot. I feel like as a manager of not being able to know personally, if they know their stuff of not being able to answer myself those. I think I, I would struggle. I know you would personally. I personally yeah. would struggle. I, I, I think for you non-technical managers out there that didn't that are in IT and didn't grow up in it per se, um, you know, you, you probably have a good way of adjusting to that, right? Yeah. It'd be utilizing other folks or what have you. Um, you know, I think the, the one thing we're not really talking about is the interview process, you know, basically like how should you run it on a timing perspective? We're just talking about the individual steps. A lot I would of, say te- screen first and then interview. What would you say? You mean technical screen first, interview second? Um, that makes sense. Because then you can um, talk about the screening. Yeah, I mean, I, I I can see both sides. You know, you interview for the person first and then make them back it up on the screen. Or you interview the screen to just make sure the technical is by default there and then choose from the person. I can see it either way. Could you see maybe like depending on the role? So if it's a client facing one, maybe I do the, the in-person first because they have to have people skills. But if it's just a coding heads down position maybe it's like well i don't care as much yeah well i mean i I hear you but i for the most part that's been a lot dead since like literally y2k like the days where you literally get put in the basement in a corner not the basement but whether you're you're client facing or not. right right but the interpersonal skills you 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 got to talk to project managers you used to be able to to use your technical skills to dance around anything you might be lacking and that that can be tough nowadays yeah it can be it just you got to work with the marketing department you got to work with yeah right so assuming you know hey you maybe you got somebody from hr maybe you didn't you had the team involved on the interview maybe you used a technical person or a technical process of a screen so now you're at the point where you are personally doing this interview right let's assume it's face to face or you, mm-hmm. you know covid changes things how are you coming to that as a hiring manager so this is your chance right so um, do you have any do you have any quirks about what you do? Like we like to laugh about how every manager has this bullshit thing that they say at the end of an interview. Like, hey, we got a lot of other people that we're interviewing, whether it's true or not. Like, I'll go with a few things. Like, promptness matters. Um, I think with technology, yes. if you're legitimately struggling, you know, emailing the chain that you got the info from and saying like struggling with parking, I apologize. Like communication, communicate, even if you're maybe just a minute late, I would always, you know, recommend, um, as a manager, especially, I would say you want to dress the part for the interview. Um, I personally love this because I just don't like how I feel in my own skin when I'm being outdressed by a factor of three 
mm. by the person I'm interviewing. It makes me feel in a weakened position. Um, you know, you could shoot holes in that if you want, but from a manager's perspective, I care about attire in the sense that they care. If it's a young person and they have a suit that doesn't fit, great. You know what I mean? They like, tried. You tried, right? Yeah. I care about stupid shit. Like, do you even have like anything to write on? I don't care if you're a note taker. Did you bring anything? Yeah. I personally don't even care about resumes, whether the candidate brought them. I like. The I way already they bring have them. it. I already printed it. But it's a good, it's a good thing to at least have a few copies of that. So I would potentially judge somebody on little things like that. Um, eye contact, uh, interest in the position in regards to like it, it just the genuine. You can feel them leaning in their chair interested you know i would agree with that yeah i'm uh, i'm actually uh, i think a lot of people would shoot holes in this i i like to sell what we're doing a lot more than are you good enough to come in here so you you have uh what i would say is a healthy appreciation for the fact that it is a two-way street yeah not everyone does. And I want people to know what we're doing, why we're doing it. Because yeah. the people that I'm interviewing. I want the buy-in. The, they're, and they're normally looking for a breath of fresh air from the run-of-the-mill staffing company with how we operate here. Uh, so that matters. Yeah. Um, I, for me, we are in a commission-based role. It is not only not faux pas, but it's appreciated if people say they're money motivated. Correct. And a lot of other jobs, that's that could be potentially a turnoff. So I sure. kind of like stuff like that. Um, I try to avoid big panel interviews because I think it just it, it's a weird dynamic. Um, but I'm also not in a spot where I need to yank in three different managers. Right. So I don't know. How do you feel just in general about – your moment walking into the room of what you're doing, what you're thinking, what your style is. Um, I mean, we talked a little bit about it. You know, like I, I make them wait. I have no problem making them wait. I want, I don't, I don't have a lot of stuff. Or maybe it's that I don't remember. It's been a, a year and a half or so since I've interviewed recently but I, I like the early thing though if you're earlier than 15 minutes i actually you're think rude. you're rude you're rude i have and i, I will make you I, wait I'm not, every minute I, i'm not always scheduled that tight but if you show up See, and i was if you there. show up 20 or 30 minutes early you have to expect that you're sitting there and even just having the admin page the manager that early literally sit in your car not even kidding. Yes, sit I, in as your car. As a manager, I would want you to sit in the car and come Correct. in ten minutes ish early. Not even it's that's okay. Yeah, I mean, I start. Ju- I hated it when people would be really early because I was booked from sunup to sundown at that place. So, like, if you were early and the 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 people, you know, my team would be like, "So and so's here for their interview," and I was like. Tough shit. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm in a meeting. I'm meeting them at 10. Yeah. You know, like, like then they can sit there yeah. and they're like, but and I'm like, no, it's fine. Yeah. And, and obviously there can be a testing component, but a lot of it is just, we have a schedule and I don't have a problem keeping it. We have an I mean? appointment yeah. at 10 o'clock. We if, will meet at 10 if o'clock. If I can sneak in early, I obviously will. Um, yeah. Okay. So what, what other thoughts about just from a, like how you handle the interviewing yourself? For example, my old company was like question based deep dive, get them talking, open a vein. I mean, the whole thing, right? They wanted to like get the person's soul. I wanted to always make people relaxed because I, I don't think it's fair to assess a person's responses when they are frozen with fear. Now, to some degree, I need them to be able to recover and get over that um, for the positions that I was looking for. But some of these were freshers, like they were right out of college, like they're, I remember being right out of college interviewing, I was petrified. You don't even know how the basic building blocks of a company even communicate. You you know what I mean? They're babies. You might not even know how to send cool calendar invites to somebody, I mean, basic stuff. Basic stuff. And so, you know, you have, I tried to always put them at ease once we were in. cool calendar invites? What does that even mean? Sorry, you want to put them at ease? Yeah, I do. I wanted them to relax. Um, okay. How about this one then? Okay. When somebody says something that you know is off the, where you would want them to be. I will tell them. Okay. You do. Okay. So what, what's your logic? Not a, okay. Not always. It depends on how severe it is, but, um, 
I, you know, I had someone who claimed to know Google Analytics and how to read analytics and analyze it, which is a massive part of the position I was hiring for. And so they were like, absolutely. Right, ladies and gentlemen, she is a massive numbers nerd. Go ahead. I really am. I and so the engagement metrics that I told you about earlier mm-hmm. and mentioned earlier, I had one guy just, I mean, he was so far away from, and mm-hmm. I stopped him and I was like, so you haven't used Google Analytics. And he just kind of went, no. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. That's a problem. Like, that's a massive part of this job. And this isn't entry level. Yeah, you know? I'm willing to end it if needed. I don't have that happen very often. It's where there's rare. Like, and for me, it's because I'm a phone interview first Oh, person. I missed that part. We always did phone yeah, interviews first. I'm a first. phone interview first. So it, 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 it's very rare that somebody is here in person. Correct. And, and I'm like showing them the door because it's not a fit per se. Uh, I think that's a good doing a phone interview first is is a good process yeah. because there were a lot we screened out that way. I think a lot of managers do the opposite though. They are silently putting marks on the pro and con list whether they're writing it down or not. And a lot of interviewees don't know that they just said something wrong and the manager will let them do that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So we will get the feedback. This candidate's not a fit because he, she said blank. And then we'll tell them, they'll be like, oh man, I wish they would have said something I could have explained. And maybe we can actually even help that. But um, I, I too, I, I want to see a little bit of how they respond. I want to see if we're on the same page. I want to see if they're like too much of a yes man where you just instantly cave on your position because you know I like the other side of a topic. Well, and I dealt with these, Some some of these were young men who were very just pompous where mm. like i know exactly what i'm talking about and i was like i could clean the floor with you yeah, man. like you have no yeah. idea who you, you're talking to that that piece of paper that costs you 100 grand is like you're not you're not on the field that's like a ticket that's like a nosebleed seat to watch the game you, you don't know? even know yeah. dude if you can't do this these simple questions like you and and you would you would, so when I would be with that I would with someone who was like that I would call them out and because I was like this person has no idea that they are sounding stupid mm. like actually stupid so like I would actually call them out and be like you need to honestly get Google Analytics certified and like you should do X, Y, Z. I yeah. would I would coach people, I would yeah. say in interviews to say like, if you're really wanting to do this, now this position at this time is not right for you, but here's what you should do. And I actually would give them like the resources um, of, of what to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we could talk about the, the interviewing all day, of course, it's a personal style. Um, there's a crap ton of books. If you work for a big organization, there's going to be a lot of training around how to handle this. Um, you know, but it really is kind of finding your way and how, and where you need help, right? Do you need technical help? Do you not? Are you, do you notice if you're the nice guy or if you're a little bit of the hard ass, like what's your role in the equation? Well, and the thing to be careful of, I'm just saying be be deliberate, have a plan. The thing to be careful of that we, I absolutely did looking back was whatever, let's say you had someone quit or it was a bad hire, you kind of go into the next interview making sure that doesn't happen again and then you just end up with a different issue. You mm-hmm. know, it's kind of like whack-a-mole. Like, Good be point. careful Be careful not to overcorrect on one issue just because Joe Schmo, your last guy, had to be let go because he, you know – looked up porn on the on the computer you know or something you're not supposed to do that you're not supposed you're to not do that. supposed yeah, to do that i've been told okay, got it. i've been told got it yeah that that's not, not good. hr yeah over here. okay cool let's continue um let's talk about a little bit of the interviewing with the hiring manager's superior from the manager's point of view okay Ooh, so I've you're, done this one you're the manager yep but um, your boss y- your boss is the one swooping in at the end so the opposite side of what we discussed earlier, right? So what are you thinking, right? My mind immediately goes to, you know, you know that if you put a stamp of approval on somebody, you need to be able to back that up. 
So just like how I think a director should be coaching the managers on what to interview for, I think the managers should be asking the same freaking questions of like, what do you want me to accomplish in here? Whatever that might sure. be. Because if I, I was in a different position than that. So but, yeah. But if you know that your superior will either always need the stamp of approval or, or that they need to get through you first you know, you can help that manager by you know, basically anticipating yeah. uh, objections or what sure. have you. Uh, or you could frankly just be against the grain uh, in whatever way you want. I, I think there's a lot of benefits to a lot of different styles on how you interact here. But but you need to know what your what your superior's goal is. Like, are they just literally giving a tip of the cap and they're a little bit of control freak? Or are they going to come in and choose somebody apart and you better make sure that you've covered that? You know, what, what do you think of that part? So in my experience, so when I, I'm not sure because when, for my perspective is twofold. One, if you hire people and you've trained them, you should to some degree let them do their job. So like if I'm the hiring manager and I'm a director and I w- I'm hiring for my team, I'm going to hire for my team. Whereas when, so at my last place, my, the owner, my boss admitted to being a terrible interviewer and hirer. So he deferred to me mm-hmm. always. The one time he was involved, he even said it in the interview of like, I'm I just here, suck at this. I'm just here to, shake hands and show my face basically because I was running the show. Now I was a little bit of a control freak, but once, (laughs) so I didn't let my manager, I let them do their jobs without a lot of supervision, honestly, but, but I didn't with the hiring. It makes sense. Um, because I didn't like their style. So the more I coached them, and they got better because they did. They, they, you know, Brian specifically greatly improved while I was there in his in his interview skills um, because I kept coaching him and, and, and he kept getting better. Well, if he, I if I would have stayed, I think at some point I would have just trusted his sure. judgment. We just weren't there yet. So if you if you have people in place that you trust and you've put in the work to get them where they go you should probably let them do their job. Yeah. So if that's what, if they give a, hey, based on what you've taught me and what we know, this person would be a good fit. Yeah. So, so, so you need to go in. That's the question. Okay, perfect. So, so advice for the hiring manager dealing with the superior would be as you grow in competency, you could actually set a goal with your superior saying, I would, some I want to earn the right in your eyes to make this decision. And how good would that look? Oh yeah. Right. Like, and let's be yeah. honest, you have managers under you for that reason, right? Like we see a lot of directors and VPs being intimately involved in the interview process. And it confuses me because if you have a VP title, I'm assuming you're managing at a minimum managers, maybe even director level people, and then they're leading your managers. And do you have leads in there too? So why are you either starting this process or why are you evaluating resumes? Yeah. Um, it, it, you it, should be coming in at the end just for that if, real if so, quick, yeah. real quick. Hey, wanted to just name to a face, face, All right, so, face to a name kind of thing. So it's not exactly hiring manager superior discussion, but what do you think? Hi, um, hire slow, fire fast? Um, yes, I am hire, 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 quick to hire, slow to fire. So you are hire fast, fire slow. In quick, mo- quick to hire. Quick to hire. Did and- I say that wrong? I said it wrong. Quick to fire, slow to hire? Yeah, so you are slow to hire, you take your time, and then no, you're more likely to ax people out of the group. I think I'm just fast. Fair enough. I'm, I think I'm quick I, on I, both of them. I am definitely the other angle of that. I am hire fast and um, and and fire slow, and that's on purpose because I want I like to give people a shot. And everything we do is performance-based, so yeah. – it's really easy to understand who's thriving and who's not. You could argue well, I need quick to be more is subjective. choosy. Quick is subjective. So I think it's once you realize that there is no return, then you're quick. That's more what I mean. Obviously, if someone's um, 
doing okay and you're going through the pit and you're working with them like there's not you should be coaching and working oh, with sure, your staff. Of course. I'm yeah. not like the yeah. ad, going around asking I, I everybody. Just, <laughs> you know, call me crazy. I just like to give people a shot and I'm very transparent. I'll swear a little in interviews on purpose because we yep. get a salesy environment here. You want to know. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm transparent about what they would be doing, how I manage exactly what our philosophy is and how it's different. So if I can just tell if I'm hitting a chord with, with people that would want to work with us. And then it's like, get in here, give it a shot. Let's go. But I very well understand the like, Hey man, I pride myself on you. Know, hey, our, our average is one out of every 12 interviews. Like we're choosy and that's cool too. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I don't, blame, I, was, I don't see, blame anybody I was, on that. I was more where I would whittle it down so that I was interviewing very few people. But that makes sense because you're the next level up. Yeah. Yep. Makes perfect sense. So, okay. How about this? Interviewing as a panel from the manager's point of view. So these could be your subordinates that are in there with you, or they could be potentially a peer, or maybe you are the lead manager and it's other lead managers in there with you, whether your direct supervisor is involved or not. So we talked about this a little bit. Do you have a style? Are you good cop or bad cop? Are you? I would say I'm more bad cop in in a panel setting. So you're gonna you're gonna be. I'm a little tougher. You're a ball buster. In a I'm panel. a little tougher. Okay, why? Uh, because well, and I only say that because of the experience that I had with it. She, uh, the the manager that I was with, she was new to her position. We were interviewing someone, and she was being very very nicey, not digging in. Uh, so I, as I do took the bull by the horns and counterbalanced, and it. counterbalanced yeah. it and was like, wait, 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 I don't want to move on yet. Like dive deeper into that. Explain that more to me. Or, and then would challenge him on things. And it wasn't that she couldn't, she just was so new. She didn't know to. Mm-hmm. So it was that, that was my only real experience with that. I would say. So some generic stuff about panels. Um, I think people do take their role. So I think if you have a panel, you don't really know what everyone's role is until a few interviews in, and then you kind of get a little of how people, you know, who's kind of running it per se, Correct. and then who is supporting in certain areas and you kind of get into a flow with each other. Well, and if you're a good manager, you're, you slowly change that with your team. So like I always ran it. But towards the end, I was deferring Mm -hmm. and trying to get them to run it because your whole goal is, I mean, is to groom the people below you. And how about some of the random stuff? So like, I'll throw some out. Mm -hmm. Um, Do do you dive into culture with the candidate and, and, and are you looking for a certain fit and how would you describe that? Are you a researcher of candidate on social media? Oh my God, I have to tell uh, you about you know, this. Th- there's other things like, do you give a crap if somebody writes a thank you note? Good call. Well, okay, you know, so so uh, let, <laughs> let, let let's pick one. Uh, let's go culture fit. Uh, how do yeah. you how do you approach that as a manager in an interview? Um, from my perspective, that was one of our biggest uh, attributes or biggest pro because we were a small company, so like we weren't the most rate competitive. Uh, But we had a lot of uh, fringe benefits and and things and culture was one of them of my team was very, very close. So we would discuss it. Um, We would, but you're not. Okay. So are you asking pointed questions that will give you insight on how they fit in the culture or is it just an interpersonal vibe, whether this person would just mesh interpersonal. I think so too. Vibe. I think so too. There are a few questions that I would ask that would tell me if they're a giver or a taker sure. in, in work, um, whether they had grit or not. But I would basically make it very clear of what the culture was of like, we're not a, uh, this department, my team, if someone needs something, we all help. There is no like, that's not my job or I don't have time. We are a group that supports each other, and it and it's just non-negotiable. And so we would talk a lot about about that. Yeah, uh, so, and, and, and so it, I would just convey a lot of it, and that was enough. always at the end. Okay, 
after so, so, I've so, assessed So them. that was a little bit of a, was that a like, let me tell you how I think you could fit here? Or that was a, I'm letting you down already because I know you don't fit. No, no. It was no, more positive. It was more very positive yeah. of here's why you should be here. If it, we, we were so proud of our culture mm-hmm. that even if we didn't want the person to work there we were selling ourselves sure. left and right because we couldn't help it yeah we we loved the culture so much how about the follow-up like like I, well i'm a fan of follow up with me whenever you want if you if you think this is amazing and you want to call me from the car in the next three minutes cool if you want to email me if you have other things you want to look into that's okay i like letting i need a them thank you I need a thank you. You need a thank you. Okay. I need a thank you. That's Uh, a professionalism. It can be an email. Of course. Uh, I would prefer handwritten, honestly. Okay, good to know. It it does go on my desk. I do read it. Um, But an email is fine. Nothing. um, No. Like, I would be like, oh. I thought they were interested. And to set the record, I think I'm speaking for you on this, but we're not talking stuffy five paragraph essay style. This One could, line. This could be a could super be, personal. Oh my god! Great thank to you meet for your you. time. It was super great. I, you know, I'd love to learn more, or I'm interested, or who cares what they say? Okay. Seriously, just Any thank response. you for your time. I'm really interested. Hope to hear from you soon. Perfect. Boom. Yeah. Okay. I just need something. And and I know for a fact a thank you note has gotten me a promotion before. Like literally, that was the thing, uh, which is cool. I, 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 um, you know, honestly, I don't have like an operating rhythm for myself. I don't know if I do that well when I've interviewed in the past as a candidate, but I like it as a manager. Yeah, handwritten anything is cool. Definitely not necessary. Um, but you, if you want to stand you out, can if tell you... it's a style of a person that like this is just how they roll, and there is a like. A dotting of eyes and crossing of T's type of type I've had of people, feeling you get from somebody when they even send a two second email. I've had people do both, and I was like, they want to stay top wow. of my mind. Good thing there's no cameras in here. So. They they want to stay top of my mind clearly. So and I, and so I love that. Or like, yeah. how many times do you call? Is this a sales position? Are you calling multiple times if I don't call you back? That's one thing yeah. I will check for. I'll deliberate if I'm hiring for a salesy position, I will deliberately not answer or return your call until you've called twice. I love it. I love it. From a salesy perspective, that makes a lot of sense. How do you feel as a manager if the candidate asks for the job in the interview? I'm impressed. Okay, you like it. I like it. Okay. And I would Unless ar- I don't like them. <laughs> uh, fair enough. <laughs> I would argue, and this is a little bit for next show on candidate, but I think just you don't have to directly say, I want this job. Do you view me as a good candidate? You can, but I think you could also just go more general of, hey, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm very interested. I, yeah. like, I like what I'm hearing. Um, well, I want to know I, that I, as a hiring manager. I would like manager. to talk more, or if you like me, I, I'm I'm interested in you. You know anything? Yes, I want to know from a hiring manager perspective. I want to know if you're interested mm. because I've had it where I thought they were, and then you know you get the decline later of like, oh, I guess I was wrong. So like having them actually say, I'm interested. Mm-hmm. Like I'm very interested. Uh, um. Even asking, like, and you're kind of right. This is going to kind of overlap with the next episode. But it was um, of saying, like, well, what concerns do you have about me in this position? And I will tell them. um, I will give that feedback in the place. I know a lot of people are not like that. Like, they just can't. Yeah. Do that. And, th- and that's why I mentioned that you don't have to be king direct. You can no, just, just. I just am. You know, yeah, yeah, you know but, that about but, me. But if, if you're not a ask for the job with great eye contact with sincerity type person and a lot of people aren't, you can do the g- more generic like I, I, this is this has been great. I actually I really learned a lot more. Like, I really like what you guys are doing. I am interested. I, you know, I want to talk with you again. If you're a written cetera. communication person, do there it you in go. your thank you email you of that's a f- perfectly acceptable place. Very true. Just try to communicate your interest level um, so that they know because we don't always know. Ready for this bomb? Research the candidate on social media. I never had Are you a to. you Facebook stalker? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, I never had to. I had an employee who freaking loved to do it. I never once asked her. She would literally be like, who are you interviewing? What's their name? And she would go creep on them. 
Um, and then come tell me if she thought that they were good or not <laughs> based on their social media. Yeah. Like, ooh, I like this person. Well, there was a post from over the weekend that says Johnny likes to go to <laughs> raves and take ecstasy. So we have that going for us. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about that on the candidate side. Uh, in Still a lot has of ways. no bearing uh, on I, his ability to do the job. I'm not a huge social media research person. Uh, I think, it's, I think it's a lot having to do with it's not my style. And that's just not the type of person that I am interviewing business. a lot. Um, we could, I think the candidate side of that's interesting because, you know, I mean, Hey, here's a teaser. Can you make that shit private? Like let's, let's, you know, buck up and just hide your stuff. It just, uh, the chances of it helping you are low and the chances of it hurting you are high. Right. Correct. Okay. So social media, it pretty, pretty straightforward for both of us. Let's go rate. So, and by rate, I mean discussion of anything from compensation plans to actual dollars and cents. Do you get into that? Do you want to know that? Are you paying them about that? Or do you not go there and then you decide based on the interview what number you would like to offer? And what are your general thoughts on how you handle that in an interview setting? Yep. So my process was during the phone interview, before they even come in, I would ask that I would tell them the range for the position mm-hmm. and ask them if they were still interested. Mm-hmm. So they already knew what the range was then because it was not on the job posting. So we would put it, we would, we would have that conversation. So before they come in, I want them to know the high and low range um, so that if we're not in their wheelhouse, mm-hmm. I don't want to waste it either of our time. Um, after that, if they asked, we would have a little bit of a discussion about it. I wasn't against it, but being a small company that didn't have a lot of clout monetarily, mm-hmm. I would I would be off put if it was if it seemed very money hungry because the my department wasn't commission based. Mm-hmm. Um and it would just we've we found you, you, it creates you, problems. It's a flight risk. It's a right flight risk. Yeah. So now if I was in a, a different company and I ha- could throw around numbers and, and it, or it's a sales, like here, you know, sales situation. Yeah. I want them hungry for money. Like absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So what I do since these are salesy positions that I'm hiring for internally, whether it be recruiters or account managers, um, I, I'm, I, I want to make sure that we're on the right range. I have a I have a detailed uh, compensation uh, policy, for lack of a better word, that I can send folks, and I will do that. Um, I'm worried about the range as well, uh, because I, I you, for me I, I'm hiring people that have experience in this industry and are either yeah. making good money or would like to again. And I you you have to make sure for me at least it, it's it's a first six month problem. So, you know, they have to see the potential yes. and understand that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll go through that in detail from a comp plan perspective, but I, I'm kind of with you. If it comes up on the phone interview, totally cool. I'll give them an answer, but I don't require that to be stated. Um, but I, I'd like to understand if we're close. Yeah, you know, for sure. Because you don't want to waste anyone's time. Yeah, I mean, it's it's an interesting topic. If, if you're interviewing for salaried positions, you know, these things matter. You have a budget with your department. You know how people fit. Like right now, for managers, they have some tough situations, right? Because the market is really tough to find people. So they might be hiring folks new to the department that are making more money than the people that are Correct. in the department already. Which is tough. And, and, and that's understanding your environment. And and hopefully if you're working with a firm like ours, that we are very adequately explaining what you're dealing with. Is it in your favor or a little against you, frankly? Yeah. And it's a candidate market. So it's a little against you as the hiring manager. Yeah. So you might- You go, got to pony up. You, or you might need to learn that Three years ago, you could look a little sideways if it was about money, but right now you need to try to not judge them because it it, it the, is about money right it, now. The, there's a money factor for sure. Yeah, you know, so uh, it, it it obviously it depends on what you want to accomplish. You don't want to give away everything. A lot of times we run into issues where our clients can pay the extra level that this person's looking for. But they're sitting here going, well, what are we going to do at review time? We can't bring this person in at the max dollar and then never be able to give them a raise again. Yeah. So talking about that matters um, with the individual. 
Uh, and I think even in IT, if you're if you're even decent at this, you can tell who's in it for the dough and who's in it for a, a right reason, even if money yeah. is a factor. Yep. You know what I mean? Oh, completely.